So this is the second in a series of videos on motivating older people in care settings. Uh, the general gist of it is the, the things I'm going to talk about as we go through these series of videos work equally, equally well no matter who you're trying to motivate. And uh, that also includes yourself on some of the bits anyway. So we're going to talk a little bit about how the brain works, but nothing too overly technical. I'm going to split down the brain's function into three basic areas. And you need to understand these three areas because this is what you tap into when you're motivating someone. So the three areas, you have a logical reasoning part of your brain, and we call that, or I'm going to call it the guru. It's the bit that gives you wisdom, advice, thinks through things calmly, uh, works out problems. It's also the, the bit that is damaged progressively with a lot of the dementias. And that causes us problems with motivation that we'll discuss as we go on. The next section is something called, originally called the chimp. Um, I think it's Dr. Peters. I'm trying to think of the guy that originally put the work together. But when I started to look at it, the chimp is supposed to be this slightly naughty part of your personality. It does all the stuff you don't want to. And I renamed it the gorilla. Because personally, my slightly naughty chimp isn't like a reckless child it's a 250 kilo silverback gorilla that grabs me by the scruff of the neck and puts me into positions and makes me say things and do things that i live to regret and it's that part of your personality that is fired up by any form of threat it's the part that responds without thought. It's the part that will have you, when you're on a diet, it's nipping into the cookie jar just to take a couple of cookies because you deserve it. The way that you know that the chimp has been controlling your actions is you normally regret what you've done afterwards, what you've said or what you've done. The chimp or gorilla is far more powerful than the guru and uh even with the best intentions the if if the the, the gorilla or the chimp decides it's going to do something um it will do it and there's very little you can do to stop it the the next section is almost like an automated response section it's a the computer and that's where habits are formed and it's all the things that you do today, today, without conscious thought are stored there. So um, if someone was to chuck something at your face, you'd probably just roll over. And that's a, a, a reflex action. When you go to get ready in the morning, whether you uh, brush your teeth before you shower or you shower before you brush your teeth is a reflex. Actually, it's a habit that you've formed over a number of years. And I can only speak personally. I normally brush before I shower. And if for any reason I forget to brush my teeth before I shower, I will not remember that I haven't brushed my teeth till I'm in the car halfway to work. And... Um, but if I follow the sequence as I normally do, it just sort of happens. So why it's important to know those three elements of your mental function is that the variety of motivation techniques tap into one of those elements. And what we're going to do over the coming videos is look at ways you motivate different elements and quite lightly... Um, towards the end there's going to be an element of how that all breaks down uh, with dementia so as a person progresses your ability to motivate the guru will drastically re reduce um, I hope that's helpful I'm going to finish it there so the next video we'll talk a little bit more about motivating the guru